Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> so, um, another question about um, work places and things that might might reopen essentially uh, first of all i wanted to ask i know on a couple of occasions both you and john baradal have said um you have no idea what's going to be announced and i know that you can't tell us in advance what's going to be announced but just to get some reassurance there's a leaked um plan that's in the mirror today um that's that talks about um reopening the exercise plan at the moment from from monday but then talks about um schools and and um markets and garden centres and cafes and and things of which we have a lot in London um, mm -hmm. and there's no mention there of for example offices and I think offices I might have a further question about that in a second but offices are certainly a very high proportion of our yeah. most concentrated workplaces um, there's no mention of that in there and you would hope that shops cafes for that the government would have been talking both to the to the mayor um, about this plan that's been leaked, um, but also to unions. So I wanted to ask, do you know what's gone into the formation of that plan? And, and is the plan that's in the mirror today something that the, the mayor has checked off on? Or is that some sort of early draft that you'll be looking at today? Um, I would have to check what's in the mirror today. Um, apologies, I haven't read that. I know that the government were working on guidance for businesses in terms of reopening that related very much to um, how you could socially distance within an office space. In the short term, though, the best way to make sure that people who would normally work in an office environment um, can socially distance is actually to sort of continue to do what most people have where possible, which is to work from home. And I think that um, obviously the GLA has done this, a whole load of organisations have done it, sort of from everything from, from banks through to um, sort of smaller smaller office um, uh, locations, um, it's possibly not something that people are going to necessarily want to do uh, um, in, indefinitely, but in the short term, people continue to work from home where possible will have to be a part of the solution until um, a vaccine is found. Yeah, um, and, just, and we've had no idea, just to reassure you, we have absolutely no idea what is likely to be. Um, we're basing quite a lot of our assumptions on on um, other leaked or floated ideas in, in the media. So mm -hmm. we, we don't actually, although we've been inputting into um, government about um, what we think the impact of different measures would be, um, we haven't been part of the discussion in terms of seeing draft documents that, that might be produced uh, later over the weekend. Okay, I mean, this, this worries me because um, we are a place where a lot of people come to in, in the course of the day. I mentioned before that we've got a lot of offices. Uh, as, far, as far as I can tell from the most recent Transport in London, Travel in London report, um, there's about half a million people who come into our central activity zone, presumably that also includes um, Canary Wharf, using rail services these aren't people who can cycle their journeys these are longer distance commuters and although they might be taking a, a health and safety at work approach to whether or not certain kinds of workplaces can reopen from a london strategic point of view if we have a million of those workplaces in the middle of our city the transport options transport question then becomes much more serious than whether or not you can distance when you get to work are, are we having the right influence on the government's thinking do you think um, have we got the right access as a city? Well, I think the, the government's been given all the documents that the uh, Strategic Coordination Group has produced in relation to what the impact of various um, lockdown um, easing would, would, would have. So I think that we have had the input. We have 40 documents. There have been those high-level conversations that I've mentioned between John Baradell, uh, David Bellamy as the Mayor's Chief of Staff, and... Um, and number 10 and other government departments have, have also had, um, we've had input into. Um, what I would say is that your example of Canary Wharf is probably a very good example of where people can continue to work from home quite successfully for some time um, yeah. because of the nature of the, the office environment. And actually the city and Canary Wharf, um, if you look at the footfall and the, um, the patterns of commuting very early on, they were among the first places to have very low footfall. So I think at one stage, um, uh, I might be wrong and I'll, I'll correct myself afterwards if, 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 if I am, at a very early stage, it was about 1% of normal um, 
footfall in the city of London, it was definitely between one and five percent anyway. It was really low because actually a lot of the professions that are carried on in some of these um, uh, environments can be successfully carried out through um, through use of technology, through home working, and actually, so uh, um, a reasonably high proportion of those people who have been travelling in quite long distances have actually been in those professions which are most easily transferable to to home working great so just just to clarify and finally um you're fairly confident that for the office workers the commuters who come into the center of the city not only the advice from the mayor but the advice from the government will be work at home for the foreseeable future um without knowing what is in those documents i can't see a situation in which that isn't a strong message from government um at the weekend okay 